Right, hello guys, welcome back to the series and welcome to nation number 21, which is Switzerland. It's been a little while since I've, uh, since you last saw me with AEK. It's been about a season and a half, maybe. The, the, the boards in Switzerland are not quite as uh, trigger happy as the ones are in Greece uh, and it's took quite a long time for a job to become available. The first one that has become available is the one that we've taken and it happens to be at Grasshoppers. Uh, grasshoppers is a team i know you can see i've done the kits as well you can see them up there on the on the uh in the picture frames we did stay on as the manager of aek for a little while but uh, i actually resigned from my post i'm getting getting, getting very close to 2000 games in management and obviously that's something that we want to get on camera so i decided to resign from that post uh, aek didn't go on to win the title though olympiakos did win it back <coughs> Grasshoppers have today confirmed the appointment of Dean Talentite as the new club's manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the 89 year old, we're now 89 years old, who has recently spent time away from club football. Uh, he's sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at Letzigrund. Uh, Talentite arrives with a record of 1,245 wins, 313 draws, and 344 defeats in his career. He's also won 28 league titles and 17 cups. First game in charge will be against Zurich. Now, if you don't know anything about Swiss football, Grasshoppers is actually based in Zurich. Uh, so our first game in charge is a derby, which is fantastic. We are halfway through the season as well, guys. Media prediction is a third. I'm not sure whether that's in the full league or where the league splits. Obviously, we'll go into that in just a minute. It does say Super League current season third, but that's in the second part of the season um, which we'll, we'll we'll see in a minute very old club though founded in 1886 we're not that far away from this club being 200 years old in game fierce rivals as you can see there are Zurich financial status is secure we do have eight million pounds to spend and a wage budget of 142,000 pound which is not too bad in terms of the squad obviously we'll run through that in a minute uh, the, the board expect us to finish mid-table in the Super League this season. I don't think that applies to us this season because how close to the end of the season that we actually are. Uh, but we'll obviously have a look. First of all, we'll have a look at the, the club info screen. You can see here Zurich Letzigrund as our stadium, 26,000 capacity. Like I say, I've got the kits in. Very nice. Key player is considered to be Gordon Burgess. He's on loan from Wolves. Uh, a very handy central defender is Gordon Burgess. In terms of affiliate clubs, this is something that I don't normally show for whatever reason. I normally forget. Uh, we've got a lot where we are the senior affiliates. You can see them all here. Again, as I don't know if there's any that we actually... Our oh, Wolves are considered to be our senior affiliate, which explains why Burgess is on loan with us. So that could be quite handy. Uh, one thing I did notice, because I've got the next nation loaded as well, is which is Belgium, is they are quite trick-happy in Belgium. <laughs> There was standard liaise job became available three times in the in the time that I've been clicking forward. Uh, but you can see just how long it's taken when we when we see we resigned uh, departed as the manager of AEK on the twenty second of November twenty seventy three. So it has been about a year and a half. Uh, like I say, Greek league league is still loaded. You can see that AEK currently in fourth. Olympiakos and Palk running away with it. Really, Olympiakos should wrap that up quite comfortably. In terms of our squad, like I say, Gordon Burgess on loan from Wolves, considered to be the key player. The best player that we've actually got, though, is Moises Esteban, a 20-year-old Peruvian, left-sided, inverted forward, inside forward. That's very good. He's got a strong right foot. He's got some great pace, some great agility, some acceleration. Dribbling and finishing could maybe let him down just a little bit. His technique as well. He's also quite injury-prone, uh, and he's also a leading player for most Challenge League sides. I believe Grasshoppers were promoted last season. They were actually in the second tier. Uh, so they've, they've gone down, come straight back up, and now here we are. You can see here as well, third in the Swiss Super League relegation group. Uh, Sam Katowski, striker. Again, fairly decent. He's got 6-24 in 24 this season, though, which is not good uh, for a striker. Again, considered to be a second tier player. 
so we do have some work to do here at Grasshopper. So I'm assuming that media prediction is, is for this league in, in third place. You can see we are clear of the relegation zone though by seven points, which is obviously good. Lausanne do have a game in hand, uh, but there's obviously every chance that we are going to stay in the division. Young boys are clear at the, well, young boys in Basel uh, are clear at the top, along with Servette and Sion just behind as well. The Basel job became insecure a couple of times, and that was the one I was really hoping for here in Switzerland. But pass winners, you can see it's young boys all the way. Basel occasionally pop up every 10 years and win one. They had a long streak of second places before nothing and then a third place, the, the, obviously last season. Uh, Neuchâtel Zamax did actually finish second. They are currently bottom of the table uh, this season round. Uh, but it is young boys, the dominant team, like I say. In terms of the league itself, you can see the Grasshoppers finished eighth in the regular season, which is really good considering they're predicted to finish bottom by quite some distance. So we do have some work to do at Grasshoppers. Obviously, my main aim for this season is to keep them in the division. In terms of league rules, now this gets confusing. You can see how confusing it is there, but I think, I think I've worked it out. So, Super League, 22 games. Easy enough. Each team plays the other twice. It's a 12-team 12 division, 12 division. You then get the champion playoff which is once the league splits from these two, the relegation group and the championship group, obviously championship group, six teams, relegation group, six teams, the top two go into the champions playoff and they actually play each other three times. And that's how the, the, the title winner is determined in this champions playoff. So the top two go into that, they play each other three times. The winner of those three games takes the championship. In terms of the relegation group, bottom relegated, fifth goes into a playoff with the the second place in the league below and the other four go into european place quarter final likewise with the championship group it's exactly the same the top two go into the the champions playoff and the the the, the other four go into the european places quarter final <laughs> yeah so you get eight teams at the end of the season the top two go into the champions playoff the bottom two one's relegated one goes into a playoff the other eight teams go into a, a miniature cup effectively to determine who qualifies for Europe that's the gist of it in terms of the actual league rules themselves though no more than non five non-EU players in the playing 11 reasonable yeah uh, registration wise maximum of 10 non-EU players again fairly reasonable minimum of eight players trained at the same nation for three years so that's not too bad it's in the nation maximum squad size of 25 again that's that's okay. Uh, and that that's about it, really. So Switzerland, guys, like you say, first game is in two days against Zurich. Obviously, I've got all the setting up and stuff to do. We'll take on the Zurich game, uh, and then I think we'll probably wrap the episode up. I don't want to go too far into to this season with Grasshoppers. We've had a quick look around the club. Obviously, we'll have a look at the players better when I pick the starting lineup. We'll take on Zurich, who are top of this relegation group. Uh, I'm confident that we can avoid relegation. Uh, and then look to build for next season, which is when we'll come back for the next episode and we'll go into it properly. Uh, so I'm going to go away and get the, the tactics and everything set up and we'll come back for that Zurich game. All right, guys, welcome back. It didn't take very long, uh, about five minutes since you were last with me. We've made the game. Zurich are favourites for the club, uh, for, the, for the game. Zurich were actually runners-up a season before last, so they obviously got a very good squad. We are away from home as well. The players aren't very very familiar with our tactic, which we've loaded in like we always do. Uh, with the single no volantes, you can see the trigger press, they're quite awkward mark in tempo width. They're very awkward in this in this uh, current formation. So it's obviously something that they're going to have to pick up fairly quickly. Now I've done my usual thing where I've, I've picked loaded the formation, asked the assistant to pick the best 11, uh, and four of them are either suspended or injured, which is really good in uh, Seravac, Goslin, Karelesi and there was another one, Moises Esteban, all suspended or injured. Uh, Goslin's the goalkeeper, by the way, who is suspended, uh, which I don't know. I don't quite know what's happening there. You don't very very often see goalkeepers picking up cards in Football Manager. So we are starting today with Lamoth in goal, a 22-year-old Swiss. He's okay. Yeah. We've got a lot of improvements to make to this squad. Decent player for most challenged league sides. Of course, we are a Super League side. 
Savonin, Samuel Savonin is a 23-year-old Swiss, again considered to be a Challenge League player. Looks okay, uh, more of a centre half than he is a central defender. But I'd rather have the better player. Uh, sorry, than a wing back. But I'd rather have the better players uh, as the as the centre half, of course. But he doesn't look too bad for for a wing back. Burgess, the man on loan from Wolves, coming in today as the centre half. Got some quite good attributes for that position. Obviously, he's only here for another couple of months, so we need to make the most of him while he's here. Machego, a Spaniard, another centre half. Again, not too bad. Another Challenge League player, though, unfortunately, 32 years old. On quite a lot of money for this squad as well. Uh, and Chris Afuli is a Swiss. That sounds more Italian to me with the Fuli on the end of it, but I'm not going to argue with him. He's Swiss, he knows what he is. Uh, 30 years old, not really up to standard, really, is he? Of course, one of the left back is is one of the positions who's actually currently injured, and that is Jurgen Balhofer, a Hungarian who looks much much better than Chris Fuli. Defensive midfielder is going to be Paulinho, Portuguese, 23 year old, uh, quite comfortable as a defensive midfielder on defend. Again, may maybe not up to this level, but according to this, he is a decent player for most Super League sides. So we'll see. Mokhtar Mokhtari Mokhtar Mokhtari is <laughs> a he's another defensive midfielder who is more comfortable playing on defend but we are going to play him as a Secundo Volante on attack today he can't finish at all his off the ball was terrible uh, but we don't really have another option obviously during the summer I am going to look to strengthen the squad as much as I can uh, and Bugman on the other side likewise is another one who, who can't finish he's got much better positioning though of 17 uh, so yeah, expecting good things from him. He's quite an intelligent player as well with his uh, concentration at 19, which is obviously going to help him, but he's, he's slow. He's slow for a 24-year-old as well, Serbian. On the right-hand side today is going to be Guilot. Guilo? We'll, we'll go Guilo. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, right-sided, inside forward again. So we've got nice opposite foot. Uh, well, he's okay on his left foot. He's not too bad again. For an inside forward. Not very intelligent though, according to that. His concentration's down at three, uh, which is not great. On the left hand side is another replacement in Spirovsky. He is a North Macedonian. I think that's the first North Macedonian I've seen in this save. Another inside forward who is okay. Okay, again, lacks concentration. And then up top, it is our star striker with six goals this season in Katowski. Hopefully he can do the business, the American there. Again, another one who's on a lot of money, but he's very, very good uh, for, for the level of football that we're playing at and for his position. He looks fairly decent. So that's the lineup for the first game of the season, guys. The only game that you're going to see this season. I'm not expecting a win. We'll, we'll see, though. It is a derby game, so anything can happen. And as we get underway as our first game as the manager of Grasshoppers here, it is Zurich on the, uh, the attack straight away with Viscardi. It's towards Jamea. At the back post, uh, his head has thankfully gone over the bar. Thankfully, the names here in Switzerland look a little bit easier for me to pronounce <laughs> compared to, to Greece. Uh, some of the nations we've been to, they've just been absolutely horrific for me to pronounce, but uh, looks a little bit better in Switzerland. As Savonin does clear that one away. Uh, I say that and we get a name that I can't see. Mokhtari, though, to, to Bugman. Bugman switching the ball out towards Guilot. It's cut out though, and Cadini heads it on. Uh, but we do win that in the in the centre of defence with Burgess. Now Bugman again. Can he pick up the pass? Finds Spirovsky. Spirovsky's got Sisafuli outside of him. Chrisafuli, beg your pardon. To Bugman again. Now Paulinho. Spirovsky. Has he got anything ahead of him? It's cut out by the defender, but we've won it back again with Chrisafuli. Now Paulinho. Paulinho looking for the ball over top towards Guilo. Guilo's in. He's absolutely blazed it. He's absolutely blazed it. We're not going to get many opportunities against Zurich. We need to take the ones that we've got. You know, you can see what kind of season Grasshopper have had. We're on a minus nine goal difference from our 29 games. Thankfully, we do have that little bit of a cushion at the bottom of the table, though. As Viscardi looks towards Cardoso at the back post, they've hit the crossbar. And Roberto Arduni puts the ball into the back of the net. He's unmarked at that far post for the rebound. And we have now fallen behind right on the half hour mark near enough uh, to to a disappointing bit of defending really. Good ball in by Viscardi. Cardoso wins the header. It's hit the crossbar. 
and Arduini is all by himself at that post just to tap it in really uh, and they're still coming with Viscardi Viscardi towards that near post if they do get there again but it's gone over the crossbar and at half time we believe it or not we've actually been on top in terms of match stats <sighs> yeah but we find ourselves behind like I said at the start though it's gonna it was gonna be a difficult game Guilo's having a poor one Spirovsky's having a poor one again it's going to take the players a little bit of time to get used to the formation, the tactic, the the, the high intensity press that we'd like to play. Uh, hopefully we can make something happen though with Spirovsky. Now Paulinho again to Machego. Striding over the halfway line. Feeds it to Spirovsky on the left-hand side. Good ball forward towards Kostovsky. Can he score? He can't. He's put it straight at the goalkeeper. He's got to do better in that situation. You can see why he's only got six goals this season. He has to do better. But Chris Furley with the throw in. It finds... Mokhtari into Guilo, Paulinho, Guilo again, and we do get there. Cyprien Guilo with his fifth goal of the season levels the game in the derby for Grasshoppers. Look at the crowd, look at the crowd. They're stunned in silence. Are the Zurich fans? Here's ours. Here's ours. Little corner over there. It's a great finish by Guilo. Paulinho, fantastic ball back to him. Guilo with a fantastic finish, uh, and that's that's exactly what we needed. But Zurich. Coming forward again with Grosic on this left-hand side. Uh, Dylenbach getting towards the byline. It's Grosic again inside the area now. Gets a shot away. He's, he's wrapped the crossbar. It's headed clear by Chris Furley. They do still come with the ball, though. It's Gemma to Lorente. Lorente looking to get the ball back into the box. It's towards Cardoso. It's easy for Lamoth in goal. Living on the edge a little bit. Although, looking at the like I said at half-time, guys, looking at the match stats, we're actually on top, really. I, th I think we... You know, I think we deserve a point if we get out of here with a point. Aguilo to take this corner, 75th, 73rd minute. It's towards the back post and Machego. Oh, that would have been a, a, a great, great way to start off, wouldn't it? Going 2 1 up away from home in the Zurich derby. That's Basel are losing. Should I have hung on for Basel, do you think? Although we have got a rule, haven't we? We have got a rule in this save where we take the first job uh, that becomes available, which. <laughs> To our detriment, you know, maybe that set us back a little bit over the over the seasons. Uh, but yeah, one all guys in our first game in charge here in Switzerland. That is very very good. Katowski really needs to perform better in front of goal though. Uh, it was it was fairly even in the end really. Uh, we possibly just about edged it, but I think a draw is a fair result. So then guys, just confirmation there that after that game it was a one all draw. Uh, I need to get to the to the to our group, the relegation group. There we go. We remain eight points clear, but Lausanne do have two games in hand over us now, which is a little bit concerning. Hopefully, uh, they don't pick up any points in those. Uh, Neuchâtel, Zamax also have a game in hand over us. In fact, we've played the most games in this bottom bottom six. Uh, but guys, I'm going to now obviously play through the rest of the season. I've got three games left, which hopefully we're going to avoid relegation. We've got Zurich again at the end of the season. I, I think we should avoid relegation. Uh, and then obviously I've got the European places to play off to go through. That would be fantastic if we could win that, but I doubt we will with the teams that are going to be in there. Uh, but in terms of finances, getting into Europe will be absolutely massive. Whatever happens though, you'll see me at the start of next season. Whether we're still in this division, which we should be, well, you know, we'll, I'm going to go through the summer, the pre-season. We'll go through any signs that we've made. Hopefully I can improve this squad to the point where I'm challenging near the top or like we've done in previous nations, like we did in Greece with Aris, uh, where we're there for a season. We do really well uh, and possibly take on... It's it's messed my filter up again. I don't know why it does that. Uh, possibly take... Look, Neuchâtel, Zamex are available as well, but they're cut adrift at the bottom. Basel are now back to stable. It would be great if we could get in somewhere like Basel or even Young Boys. Young Boys would be fantastic, wouldn't it? They're not on the best run of form as things stand, but they're probably still going to win the, the, the championship. Uh, but yeah, guys... New club, new nation. We'll do our best like we always do. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you all at the start of next season. So cheers, guys. See you later.